So what does all of this say about the state of the country? Are politics becoming too tribal? Richard Kreitner joins me now. He's the author of Break It Up, Secession, Division, and the Secret History of America's Imperfect Union. We are also joined by Eric McDaniel. He's the Associate Professor of Government at the University of Texas. And by Carl Schramm, an economist, leader in economic growth, and a professor at Syracuse University. So, Richard, we'll start with you. How many times have we heard politicians on both sides say, if you don't like it, move? This is a group that's saying, why should we? Are we going to be seeing more measures like this potentially happen across the country? I think we absolutely are. You know, as, as your introduction showed, this is already happening in Illinois. San Bernardino just the other night in the, in the midterm elections also voted to, I believe, look at the question of whether they're getting all of the resources that they deserve or that they think they deserve from the state government. And of course, over the last several years, we've started to see the idea of secession kind of return in American politics, not of counties that want to leave states, but of states that want to leave the union. In Texas, this has gone on um, after uh, Joe Biden's victory in California in 2016, and it's going on in New Hampshire and, and really in lots of different places around the country. It's kind of the most American, you know, move in the book to to take your ball and go home or to want to separate from the existing polity in some kind of protest over the direction that it's going in if you disagree with it. So I think as American politics grows more dysfunctional, you know, the midterm election results Results have been quite interesting, but what they've mostly revealed is what we knew already, which is that we live in a very divided country. And as each side grows more and more frustrated and not seeing its will enacted at the national level, I think we're going to start to see more and more movements to fracture existing states or even the country at large. Interesting. So, Carl, is there any real chance that something like this could happen? It obviously impacts more than just physical boundaries. Uh, we have some of the numbers in both states. What are your thoughts? Well, uh, I think, um, you know, like all of these movements, uh, I would guess that we have to think about a calendar that might stretch out to like 20 years. So this is going on, and I think there's a head of steam building up for it. Um, we're watching it all over, as, as you pointed out and the other panelists have pointed out. Um, we can watch it in a number of states. Um, I happen to live in Maryland right now, and we see three counties in western Maryland wanting to get into West Virginia. Uh, my university is in New York State. There's a brand new drive to split the state three ways. Um, there's another drive that's been going on for four years to basically just split the state twice, send New York City packing and make a different state upstate. Um, and you know, uh, New York offers us something um, uh, of a resolution in a strange way. <clears throat> I wouldn't be recommending, I'm not a, a proponent of it necessarily, <clears throat> but the facts have to be dealt with and that is, the upstate uh, counties, um, you know, with the frustration over politics and lots more in terms of what the costs are, the taxation. A simple rule of thumb is that the state employs, New York State employs twice the number of public employees as does Florida, and Florida has a bigger population now. So one of the resolutions you're watching is New York is losing on the order of 300,000 people a year. It's been going on and on and on. The delegation is going to be smaller in Congress as a result. Um, and I think, you know, it's hard to forecast this. I'm not sure we see the whole country breaking up, but I do think we could have, actually have, you know, as politics move along and this looks like it actually has to be dealt with, you know, how do Oregonians think about you know, an urban Oregon, right, with uh, 60, 70 percent of the landmass of Oregon not wanting to be Oregonians. Exactly. You know, good question. And, and, and that is, that's a salient point. And that's something that um, has some people thinking, Eric, um, the movement has had some success on the ballot, but could this legally be done? Yeah, I mean, there, it has been established that if Oregon agrees, Idaho agrees, and Congress agrees that this can be accomplished. However, I just don't think politically it can be accomplished. Uh, there are, Texas keeps saying that it can legally secede, even though that's not true. There is this belief that if you don't like it, you can go. And I think federalism feeds into this. Uh, the fact that we have a federal system and we talk about states' rights, that now we're seeing this idea of county rights. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.